So a couple of uh, my viewers over on the OG's Danger Show and even a couple of viewers on Tough Later Mouse in the past have asked if we would ever make a video of the kind of the behind the scenes what it uh, what goes into making one of these Tough Later Mouse videos. I haven't asked Jeff but I brought along my camera today. I'm going to set it up and show you kind of our setup out there. I can't put a camera in the studio with Jeff while he's editing your video, but everybody knows what a guy sitting at a computer editing a video must look like. So I will show you, however, the setup that we use, the way we have the cameras arranged and the, uh, you know, the stools and where we park and all that. Well, I'm uh, leaving my town right now and headed over to a neighboring town, just outside of town actually, to a property that we are allowed to use for shooting. We've actually moved a, a few different uh, locations over the years. You've probably seen uh, Jeff and Darren started out on a sand pile way out in the country near a riverbed. Farmers nearby are not always excited about that, people shooting, even though, as you know from these videos, we don't shoot a ton of rounds. Some of these videos are made with fewer than 10 rounds fired. So we're not like, you know, hillbillies out there shooting beer cans off a stump all afternoon and leave it a bunch of trash. We're also very conscientious about cleaning up the areas we use so that we don't get uninvited from them. For quite a long time, we used a, a location out in the west side of the valley here, south of Lemoore Naval Air Station. You guys used to see the Navy jets flying over and wrecking our audio as soon as we started filming every single time. Because a lot of Navy kids go out there and shoot and they leave a lot of trash, we've kind of mentioned that in some videos before, they leave a lot of trash on the ground, a lot of things that they've shot up, they destroy. Yeah, it's fun to do, but they just leave them there. And including all of their shell casings and shotgun holes. Add to that the fact that farmers nearby are working and a lot of people out there didn't have any consideration for the safety of the workers nearby. There could be a guy on a tractor driving by in the background while some of these kids were shooting off rifles and shotguns. And that's just not cool, folks. That's not cool from either side of the coin. So for a couple of different reasons, the farm corporations that border that area have asked the sheriff and the fishing game and the highway patrol, and they've just asked everybody out there to not use that area to shoot anymore. I can't say that it's not being used, but since they don't want shooters out there endangering their folks, we have decided just to find a different location. We also have an abandoned runway that we use south of my town that is pretty cool. It's a little over a mile long. It's asphalt. You can go clear to the west end of it and not be seen from the east end of it, really. So it's a great little place to shoot. It's very, very safe. There's no workers anywhere nearby. And uh, that's that's become a place, too, where, we've, uh, where I've done some of my OG videos and where Jeff has filmed a couple of his videos. The Streak ammunition video, for one, and the uh, Barrett 416 video, that, those were a couple that come to mind that we filmed out there. Dead Eye Danny has uh, connections with a farmer, a dairyman south of uh, his town, and we were using a dirt road out there for a while, and that became an issue, too, where the farmer asked us only to come out and shoot on Sundays so that we weren't in any way endangering his workers. Mind you that everyone on this crew is extremely conscientious about not shooting anywhere near where people are working. It doesn't matter if that guy's working a half a mile away and we're shooting a shotgun that would never reach over there. We never want to be pointed in the direction of a field worker in any way, shape, or form. So, we were asked only to shoot at that location on Sundays, and before long, even the workers were out there on Sundays. So that location also became kind of a uh, less than perfect option. Recently, Darren, who you might remember from the early, early Tau Flater most videos, connected us with a, a dairyman north of Jeffstown, and that guy has a lot of property out there up against a river, huge berm, shooting off in a safe direction, uh, there will be no workers. There's no way workers can be between us and the berm that we shoot against. It's a very safe uh, location in all directions. So that's where I'm headed right now. 
it's a little warm today it's already 84 degrees by my uh, trucks thermometer so we're hoping to get out there a little bit earlier than we normally do um, it's about a 20 minute drive for me to head over there 25 minutes so I'm gonna meet Jeff over there we're gonna get set up I'll set up my camera and show you guys a little bit about all the equipment and stuff that goes into filming a Talflater mouse video it's not all that exciting folks but more importantly I'll try to get the elusive Jeff from Talflater Mouse on camera with his face if I can. Uh, those of you who say you've never seen Jeff have not watched all the videos. Jeff has actually appeared in quite a few of his videos. I've turned the camera on Jeff a few times and captured him shooting a few things. But a lot of people think of Jeff as the disembodied voice and the few times that he has been seen on camera. Commenters always say that he looks a lot older than he sounds on uh, on YouTube. So I guess Jeff has a 30-year-old voice, but uh, I don't think the rest of him is. Since we're cruising along here and I got a couple seconds to talk to you, a little behind the music on how the videos are monetized, advertised, how Jeff makes money on them. Um, now, I don't know all the ins and outs. I'm not on that end of it. I don't see his analytics on his his uh, videos. I don't get a nickel from my videos. I'm not monetized. Um, I don't plan on being monetized. I'm well taken care of in my regular job. I do this as a hobby and for fun. I really appreciate the comments that you guys throw out there. So I'm not really in it for making money as a career. So you might be familiar with YouTube's newest rules. Jeff's talked about them quite a few times. And again, I don't know all the ins and outs, but I will tell you that YouTube, a couple of years ago, decided they do not like disassembly or assembly of firearms being shown. We didn't do a whole lot of that on this channel. They don't like the disassembly or assembly of ammunition. And you might know that Jeff used to do a lot of tabletop videos to show how he was constructing these rounds. Some of these rounds are sent to him from all over the world, quite a few of them actually. And they don't send the completed round, obviously. You can't send a, something with gunpowder through the mail. So Jeff takes the actual projectile that people mill for him, mold for him, hand whittle for him sometimes. He takes those projectiles and he builds them into shotgun shells himself right there in his garage with a crimper. He used to show you a lot of videos about how those were assembled, but YouTube frowns upon such things, folks. So, not a lot of that. You might see some real quick clips of the components uh, before and after what the, what the shell looks like. While we're out filming, it's even gotten so bad that they don't like to see ammunition in a video. To keep your videos monetized, you can't show ammunition in firearms, or at least it's tough to show ammunition and firearms. So we often try to not advertise the fact that we are using a shotgun shell or bullet. We try to hide that fact and disguise it by holding it in our hands in a certain way. And then you might have, uh, you might be familiar with the mass accelerator. If anyone uses the word gun, shotgun, shooting, anything like that, it triggers some kind of algorithm on YouTube. And next thing you know, Jeff's video is getting demonetized. So for that reason, he tries to hide the image of the shotgun in the video. Everybody knows of what's what's going on. You can hear it in the video. You can see Danny shooting, but you just can't see the shotgun. For some reason, that is acceptable. Now, this only applies to handmade or homemade ammunition. Uh, anytime you're shooting, like you've probably recently seen us do a test on some commercial uh, commercially available Italian rounds labeled law enforcement buckshot Winchester double X rounds and the uh, ubiquitous federal flight control rounds those are all factory produced ammunitions and therefore we can show firearms go figure figure out that rule we can show firearms if we're shooting factory produced ammunition but we cannot show firearms if we are showing handmade ammunition which happens to be most of what gets sent downrange on this channel. So for that reason, you all will see more of the mass accelerator. We have to dance around YouTube's silly, silly games so that we can continue to make videos that Jeff can get monetized. One thing I would encourage you to do if you can, just because 
I think they're cool and it'd be fun to see people wearing them around is the merchandise shelf just below Jeff's videos show quite a few Tough Leader Mouse t-shirts that are available and Teespring makes these shirts for Jeff they take the vast majority of the profits Jeff gets a little bit couple dollars on each shirt so if you guys are so inclined and you want to celebrate the mass accelerator the OG finger wiggle or Dead Eye Danny or any other number of Tau Flater Mouse memes uh, please jump over to the Tau Flater Mouse channel look at that merchandise shelf that's under every video and you can pick out a shirt select your own color select your own design uh, OG drew most of those designs so um, that would be cool getting ready to shoot some rounds made out of rocks Jeff's telling me Jeff and I communicate back and forth by email Jeff's the only human I know on earth or at least in the western hemisphere that does not own a cell phone so um, if I need to get a hold of Jeff even if it's last minute I have to email him uh, Jeff emails me with uh, locations and changes and times and stuff like that and tells me anything I might need to bring out to the set all right so I'm going to shut down the camera shut down my mouth and we'll see you back out here on the Telflator site shortly. To all those who say they've never seen you on YouTube, there this you is go. the elusive Jeff. Yeah. Are you impressed now? Yeah, so this is my lunch break. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs>